Hello and welcome to the show. Today is June 16th, 2022. Let me start by saying that I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. These are some thoughts I had about uh, about the MOAS, what to expect, etc. Um, when the MOAS happens, things may not uh, be, be operating as they normally operate. There may be some... Um, there may be some things that are odd, let's just say. But uh, so this is the, the kind of stuff you can expect in the upcoming MOAS. So let's start by uh, let's start by looking at um, this video from the SEC. It is um, it's about uh, meme stocks. It's a PSA that uh, that the SEC put out, and it's from the it, let's see, it's from the U.S. Welcome back, Brad. It's your investment. I'll take meme stocks. Invest. Ow. Your investment, Julie. I'm gonna do some research first. Well played, Julie. Well played. We can do research? <laughs> Investing is not a game. Always do your research before making an investment decision. Learn more at investor.gov. Before you invest, investor.gov. And that is what the the US SEC had to say. So there you go. They're uh they're warning you, but they're also making fun of retail investors whom they're actually meant to protect. Uh, the retail investor in this video seems to look uh, extremely awkward, um, and he appears not to know what he's talking, you know, n not to know how markets work. He looks confused a lot of the times. He invests in meme, quote unquote, meme stocks, and he immediately loses his money. So there are some other implications there. The implications are that meme stocks are bad investments and you would lose your money immediately Immediately, if you invested in meme stocks. They, they're just bad stuff. Well, if you saw my previous video, you'll have noted that meme stocks actually outperformed the S&P 500 for the last day, week, month, six months. <laughs> they've, uh, they've actually outperformed the S&P 500 by quite a bit. So... The S&P 500, you've taken a nosedive down 22%. Meme stocks have not. Let's see. Let's see what um, Thomas Peter Fai has to say. Thomas Peter Fai, in case you didn't know, he's uh, he's um, the interactive broker's founder and chairman. He is uh, he is not considered to be a retail investor. He is considered to be an expert in the field of uh, of stock markets and economics and various other things. Um, Anyway, he's he's going to be talking about GameStop, and GameStop, by the way, is a meme stock. It is the first meme stock. Let's hear what he has to say. Let's see. Video? Oh, we do not have video. Well, let's go back. Turns out I was on. Let's hear what he has to say. So, what I would like to point out here, that we have come dangerously close to the collapse of the entire system, and the public is seems to be completely unaware of that, including Congress and the regulators. So, so let me explain to you that on, on January 26th, game had closed at $77 a share. The following day, it closed at 148. The following morning on January 28th, the stock opened at 355 and traded up to 480. At the same time, Game had 50 million registered shares outstanding and a short interest of 70 million shares. In addition, there were about one and a half million calls, which would call for 150 million shares. When the shorts, when, if the shorts, uh, sorry, if the longs repay their margin loans and exercise the calls, their brokers would have had to be, would have been obligated by the rules as they are today to deliver to them 270 million shares while they on, by only 50 million shares existed. So when the shorts cannot deliver the shares, the broker representing the longs must, must by the rules of the system, go into the market and buy the shares at any price pushing the price into the thousands. So as the price goes higher, 
the shorts default on the brokers. The brokers now must cover themselves. They push the price further up. So the brokers default on the clearing houses, and you end up with a complete mess that is practically impossible to sort out. So that's what almost happened. To avoid this in the future, the SEC needs to immediately call for a reporting of short interest on a daily basis because they are currently only reported twice a month. And I think they should increase margin requirements on shorts by 1% for every short, every percent of short interest. That would solve the problem. This is a gaping hole so, that didn't had before because short squeezes are considered market manipulation, which is illegal. But so therefore nobody did it, but with these uh, social platform platforms, people can just chit chat and uh, suddenly a short right. interest emerge without pointing at any one person okay. who is guilty, right? So, so, Thomas, I mean, it, it's, it's extremely complicated, and, and they'll have to try to explain all this market structure in between some of the, the populist grandstanding from, from members of Congress tomorrow. But ultimately, who are you saying is to blame, if anyone, for what happened? No, it's nobody, nobody is to blame. There is a hole in the system that we immediately have to stop. There's a hole Which is in the short, short interest reporting. Short, short squeezes. Sorry. You're you're saying that is the short interest reporting. That's that's what was happening here. That was the problem. No, the problem was that the the there is no increased margin requirements at shor on shorts as the short inter interest increases. As a matter of fact, we, most people don't even know what the short interest is because it's only reported once every twice every month. What what. So, as we saw, the um, there were more shares that were shorted than existed. Than existed, it was impossible for shorts to deliver the shares. So the price headed towards infinity, actually. <laughs> so, uh, and if we look at uh, at the news reporter, it looks like the retail investor actually understands a hell of a lot more about the market dynamics than the CNBC reporter. To me, uh, the retail investor is actually extremely sophisticated and well researched because they understand what's going on. They understand why that stock would go towards infinity. I mean, they know what they hold and they know what that means. So yeah, retail investors actually understand. They understand that they can buy and hold and hold on until, you know, they can last longer than, than the short hedge funds. And uh, that's what's been happening for over the last year or so. Okay. So, today, more than a year after this video was made, none of Thomas Peterfly's recommendations were actually enacted, so this problem still exists. There has been no change. Let's hear one, let's hear again one part of what he had to say. I think it's re very relevant, actually. Uh, sorry, the longs repay their margin loans and exercise the calls, their brokers would have had to be, would have been obligated by the rules as they are today to deliver to them 270 million shares while they on, by only 50 million shares existed. So when the shorts cannot deliver the shares, the broker representing the longs must, must by the rules of the system go into the market and buy the shares at any price. At any price. And that results in what we call MOAS, or the mother of all short squeezes, right? The broker must, by the rules, go into the market and buy the shares at any price. Push, He said pushing this price into the thousands, but it can, it, but depends. If no one's selling, it can go even higher. It can go insane. So the question comes up, uh, what can you expect during the MOAS? Well, you can expect large increases in price, of course. Um, but in the past, what we saw was that brokers will not allow buying of shares, only selling. This happened before with Robinhood. Will it happen again? Well, you never know. It could. It could. Okay. 
Uh, brokers like Robinhood also sold people's shares without their instructions. Okay, they sold shares without the instructions of the sh of of the uh, account holder. So if you know, just be aware, stuff might happen. Okay, now at the same time, because the price will be heading up into the, into the thousands very quickly, and hedge funds will be some hedge funds will be obliterated. Someone's going to be held accountable to blame, and the news media will blame retail because. Retail is not paying their salaries. Okay. <laughs> who pays for the salaries of the news media? Advertisers, of course. Who were the advertisers? Well, they were the large brokerage firms. And who are the biggest customers of the large brokerage firms? Well, they are the hedge funds. And are the large brokerage firms and hedge funds going to be vilified <laughs> by the people they're paying? Hell no. <laughs> so this, th yeah, they'll likely try to vilify retail shareholders. Maybe they won't be able to. Maybe they will. Who knows? They were unsuccessful the first time, but you know, you never know. There might even be another set of congressional hearings. Okay, there might. You never know. But how fast is this going to happen? What happened before in the past? Let's look. We know that in uh, late January, early February of 2021, this is the price action of GameStop on a day per on a per one day interval. It took about uh, 16 days or or 11 bars or so for this this stock to move. Okay, 16 days. That is from January 12th all the way to January 28th, 2021. And uh, when that happened, GameStop went from $20 to $480, which is a 24x gain. But that was not the, the the low of GameStop. GameStop was hovering at a price of about four to six dollars just six months ago. So if you held on, to, if you had bought GameStop six months ago, you would have gotten in about four dollars. So going from four dollars to four hundred eighty four hundred and eighty dollars, uh, that's closer to a well one hundred and twenty x gain. Okay, there you go. So when. You know, was there any news that triggered this? No, there was no news. This stock moves based upon no news. It may it moves based upon the fact that at some point in time there will be a margin call because someone will not be able to meet their financial collateral obligations. And when they can't meet their financial collateral obligations, they need to close out their books, close out their position, which means that they need to sell their longs and buy their shorts. And when they buy the shorts to close out their position, the price goes up significantly. Note that along the way, during the 16-day period, it went sideways for about five days. Let me repeat, it went sideways for five days. You don't expect a straight shot up. A lot of times it went down. There were several red days in between, okay? So it may gap up and then drop back down and then gap back up again. Who knows? It's it's very volatile, and then that's that's the way it will be. And uh, if you note, the peak actually happened during a red day. When it hit it, when GameStop hit its peak, it plummeted and it dropped a lot at that point in time. So that that was uh, that was GameStop, and um, the GameStop saga is really not over yet. We haven't seen the real Moas. That was just. That was just the first uh, squeeze. That was that was what they called a gamma squeeze, and uh, that was not the MOAS. So, what about Metamaterials, Torchlight, Preferred Shares, Metamaterials, and Cam Camber Energy? What can we expect there? What's going on there? Well, at some point, the Torchlight oil and gas assets will be sold, and a dividend will be announced for MMTLP or Oilco, depending upon whether or not Oilco has been spun out yet. Okay. And uh, during, and there'll be a time difference between when you know, you know, when they announce the dividend, and the date of record. The date of record is when you have to have to hold the stock, the stock, in order to be paid the dividend. Okay. Um, at some time between that time difference, the MMTLP shares will likely rise dramatically. Okay. And it'll rise towards the dividend price. Quite possibly overshoot the dividend price by, you know. By some factor, uh, maybe it won't. Maybe it'll. Maybe it'll rise asymptotically towards it. Maybe it'll overshoot. Hard to say. It's likely I'm saying that the buy button will be turned off way before then, though. 
And um, maybe it'll be turned off. Maybe it, maybe it won't. But I know this. I know that right now, if you're on certain platforms like Fidelity, you, you basically can't buy MMTLP. They won't let you. Why? Because they can't get it themselves. And if they can't get it, they're not going to, um, you know, they're not going to extend uh, a preferred share to you because then they'll be on the hook, right? <clears throat> so you may not be able to buy MMTLP at that point in time, but you will be able to sell. So, yeah. So although you'll be able to sell, you don't have to actually sell your shares. You can hold on and just collect the dividend, right? If you collect the dividend, there's a preferred tax treatment, in, at least in the United States of America, right? In the U.S. VA. When you collect that dividend, you get paid a qualified dividend. You just have to hold on to those that those dividend shares for a while, and you get the qualified dividend, which is basically capital gains, which is basically long-term capital gains rates, and it's a decrease in the amount of money you'll be taxed. So there's a lot to be said for just holding on and collecting the dividend there. Now, along the way, although Metamaterials Torchlight Preferred Shares is different than GameStop, it's an oil and gas asset sale. It's very different. It may actually cause Metamaterials to start a run. It may actually, Metamaterials may start going in a sympathy movement. What do I mean by that? A lot of MMTLP shareholders are also MMAT shareholders, right? That's how they got them. And we all know that they might actually reinvest back their dividend into metamaterials. In fact, at one point in time, sometime in the past, George Palacaro said he wouldn't, you know, he would be very happy if that, if, if, if shareholders did that. He's not encouraging people to do that. He's just saying he would be very happy if that happened, right? So... Um, there could be a sympathy, sympathy movement. MMAT might start running just because MMTLP has started running, right? But unlike GameStop, this is a dividend play. This is not an oil and, oil and gas. This is not, this is not a stock play short squeeze. This is not a stock short squeeze play per se only. This is a dividend play. And it's a dividend based on an oil and gas asset sale. So as a result, there's an upper bound in in terms of what you think the price can be. And that's a dividend price, right? That's the top end of where, of where it could go. And because it's it's to be paid out, uh, you know, the payout can be cash settled. It's not being paid out in stock. It's being paid out in cash. Or it's, or well, it might be paid out in stock, in which case it's, it'll, it's paid out in the stock of the buying company, okay? But this MMTLP dividend... Um, the shorts can cash settle it, I believe, right? Or they could get a hold of the other stock from the larger company that's buying the, the asset, and then they can, you know, they can settle it that way. In either case, it can be taken care of. I'm thinking this is a 10 to $50 billion problem for the shorts, right? And that it's a $10 billion problem if there were no shorts, right? It's a $10 billion transaction or so, maybe $5 billion, $5, $10 billion, if there's no shorts. That's for all the shares. If there's 5x the number of shares, uh, if there's 5x the number of shorts as shares, then it's a $50 billion problem. Simple, right? I don't know how many shorts there are. To be honest. I really don't. There's, it's hard to say. But I don't think it's bigger than a $50 billion problem, which means it can be taken care of. And when I say that it's a problem that can be taken care of, we know what the, or I've used this, um, this table to actually, this table and this chart to figure out what the, you know, the, the dividend payments might be, right? This gives an idea, this range bounds it, and this puts a, a, a top end to the actual price. So because this puts a top end to that actual price, it, it, I don't see it going significantly higher than that. Um, this chart does not include natural gas value, of course, so it might go an additional $15 per share above in terms of when you know when you add the natural gas value but I, but not things significantly right i'm not seeing two hundred dollars three hundred dollars four hundred dollars a share a share for mmtlp i'm thinking that it's mmtlp will be in this particular range which is somewhere in the range of i don't know 50 to 77 dollars maybe it can be 15 dollars above that when you factor in the natural gas right but that that's what that's what could be expected let me state that I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. All of this stuff that I just told you is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Okay, that's that's what I'm... Yeah, so I'm not a financial advisor. <laughs> I just wanted to make that abundantly clear. Okay, 
What about meta materials now? Meta materials is closer to GameStop than MMTLP because, in you know, in terms of similarity, because there's a very lar- it's a stock and there's a very large short position held by hedge funds. We know this to be true. Okay. What I believe is that at the current prices, if the MMTLP dividend is significant, and as you saw in the previous slide, I believe it will be, and the MMTLP dividend recipients reinvest that you know, some of that money back into MMAT. I don't believe there are enough shares to buy without increasing the price of MMAT substantially. Okay. What does that mean? That means the price of MMAT can go up significantly, right? And uh, that significant price increase could result in margin calls. It will most likely result in margin calls for the short hedge funds. And that means forced buying. Uh, Very likely at that point in time, the buy button will be disabled or removed for MMAT because the prices will start going very, very high. Uh, It might take several days. Don't forget, GameStop took about 16 days. It might be longer or shorter than GameStop. I do not know. Okay, I'm just saying. Um, Yeah. But uh, like GameStop, there is no upper bound in price, okay, because it's, it's a share thing. There are a limited number of shares. We know that there's something like 280 million shares or so. There's a very large short position. Um, the shorts will likely get margin called, which means the forced buys and at whatever the market price is, right? It's whatever the market price is. That's what Thomas Peterfa had to say. Hmm. Uh, so as a result, could, it, could this reach similar numbers to GameStop? You know, oh, well, it depends. GameStop has two points. Could it reach similar numbers to the GameStop future MOAS? Right? We don't know what what that is right i think that's unlikely and the reason is gamestop has a lot less shares they have 70 million shares and a lot more shareholders they have about probably 10 million plus shareholders in gamestop okay that's a lot of shareholders and that's a lot of that's a lot of shares so i think that and those shareholders are not going to sell in gamestop so i think that the future moas is going to be really high and mmat we've got about 170,000 shareholders Um, they're great, strong diamond hand shareholders, but 170,000 is not 10 million. You know, let's just be honest here. And we have a lot more shares. 280 million shares is, you know, GameStop has 70, has 75 million, 77 million, I think somewhere around there. Now, could it reach similar numbers to GameStop's January, February of 2021? Okay. That's not the MOAS. That's where GameStop got to before. Okay. I think maybe. I don't think that's unreasonable. I think it is possible. Um, do I think it will? I don't know. It's hard to say. I'm giving this a maybe. Eh, low probability, but possible. Okay. Do I think it'll reach triple digits? I think there's a pretty darn good chance it'll reach triple digits. I think there's a pretty darn good chance it'll reach triple digits. It's a very good chance, I think. Yeah. I give that probably... Uh, 50 to 60 percent chance it'll hit that what about double quadruple quintuple okay you know did of of the last all-time high the last all-time high was factored in everything about 21 dollars or so say 20 dollars so quintuple that would be about a hundred dollars i think there's a yeah i think i think there's i think it could easily hit double triple quadruple or even quintuple it's it's last all time high. i think that's very possible i think that's a high likelihood okay so again i'm not a financial advisor and uh this is not financial advice i'm not telling anyone to buy gamestop i'm not telling anyone to buy meta materials or anything like that this information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only and that's it okay camber energy now camber energy is unique because it's somewhere in between right there's a large short position held by hedge funds, okay? But they're also an energy and natural gas play. Not only are they an energy and energy, natural gas play, they're a turnaround story, right? They're basically a situation... Um, yeah. They're basically... They, they're basically a company that's turning around. And I think that when it starts running in price significantly, if and when it starts running in, up in price significantly, I think it's more of a win... Due to its history, right? I mean, it, it, Camber Energy has a history. They had corrupt and incompetent previous management, 
lots of reverse splits, right? And that meant that the previous share price, if you adjust for, you know, for all the reverse splits, Camber Energy had a valuation initially of around 200 million plus per share. That's an incredible dollar value. <laughs> okay. Do I think Camber Energy will go up in price significantly? Yeah, it probably will. But because it already, quote unquote, had this humongous price, even though it's adjusted, I don't think the buy button is going to be turned off because I don't think it's going to hit anywhere near 200 million a share, right? So with that, what's a reasonable price target for two, for Canberra Energy, right? I mean, what, you know, what about getting back to just even the last, I don't know, 52 week high before the short attack, right? That seems reasonable. I think, I think that, that's not unreasonable, right? Uh, $5 is not an unreasonable dollar value, okay? What about double, triple, quadruple, uh, you know? Could it hit, you know, a, a few times that? Yeah, I mean, 10, 15, 20, 25, <laughs> easily. Uh, do I think it can go higher? I don't know. <laughs> Nobody does. But um, I'll tell you this, the open conductor detection has a huge potential, okay? The forest fires like crazy. And uh, this thing can prevent them. Um, the medical waste disposal unit, I mean, the medical waste disposal using ozone technologies, that's huge. That's gigantic. ESG carbon capture, the exclusive license they've got in Canada. Canada is very uh, climate friendly, that whole thing. I mean, and quite frankly, the price of gas keeps, the price of oil keeps going up. I mean, if you just look at the price of gas out, you know, when you put gas in your car, you can tell the price of oil is going up. And it looks like Camber Energy is buying some more wells, right? They're buying, you know, wells that are actively producing 18,000 barrels per day. So we'll see. Anyway, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. I am repeating this over mind over every single summary, just so that, um, that, so just so that that is clear. Okay. And what about GameStop? <laughs> What about GameStop? At some point, a dividend, a split via dividend will be announced, right? It will happen, I believe, okay? At that point, the shorts will be unable to cover, okay? And they'll have to deliver those shares, and they won't be able to. And so that the, that means the price will go up significantly. The buy button will very likely be turned off again, like it was in the past. I don't know which brokers will do it, but it will very likely happen somewhere. And that means MOAS. That means MOAS. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. I know you're getting tired of me hearing. I know you're getting tired of me me saying that. But hey, that's the fact. <laughs> so, some quick FAQ questions. I'm adding FAQs in yellow at the end of all of this stuff. So, so there you go. How high do you, do you think the prices can get during the MOAS? You know, when's a good time to sell? Is it better to sell on the way up, on the way down? What's the deal here? These are some common questions. And I'll, you know, so I think I'll try to give my spin on it. So how high will prices get during my last? Nobody knows. Nobody really knows. Could it reach 10,000? Yeah. Could it reach 100,000? Definitely. Could it reach a million? Yeah, it could. <laughs> it actually could. There's a lot of people saying they will not sell unless it hits six figures or more. Okay. Uh, but chances are, no matter how high it gets, you will not be the one person who sold at the top. There will be only one person who sold at the top. And that, chances are, will not be you. Okay? <laughs> so, because nobody knows, and you're not going to be the, the one person who sells at the top, you know, when's a good time to sell? Is there a good time to sell? You know, can you time the sell? Well, I don't think you can time the sell. But I think, you know, if you're happy with the amount of money you made, that's a good time to sell, you know. If you need the money to pay for something like, you know, heart surgery or something, that's a good time to sell, you know. It, you know, if you need to buy a house because, you know, you got a kid on the way or something like that, that's a good time to sell. Okay, it's a personal decision. Every single person is different, right? So as a result, uh, you know, you sell when you sell based upon what your needs are, not based upon what, you know, not based upon what the top price could be. Okay, but is it better to sell on the way up or on the way down, right? I mean... You gotta be. You gotta at least know when to sell, right? So there's a theory going around. Some people are saying that if you sell on the way up, you're gonna prevent MOAS from happening because if everybody sells on the way up, MOAS won't happen, and as a result, you know that's it. On the other hand, when the prices go up because of forced buying, right? 
it, it doesn't buy, it doesn't go up because, you know, everyone's saying, oh, GameStop is worth $100,000 a share. No, it goes up because you heard Thomas Peter Fry, you know, you need to balance the books, and that results in forced buying to balance the books. It's just the rules of the game. You have to buy because those are the rules. Okay. When the forced buying stops, when the prices are insane and the forced buying stops, that means demand will go to zero at those price levels. Zero. And that means prices will plummet. There will be no demand on the way down at $100,000 a share. Okay. There will be none. <laughs> it's only going up because of forced buying. And that forced buying is only because of certain rules. Okay. This is different. This is this a different scenario than regular supply and demand. So, one possible solution to the to figuring out when to sell, okay, is that you don't sell the whole thing in one shot. You sell a small amount, and you sell it multiple times at various different price levels as the price is going up, right? So, you don't sell the whole thing. You sell a little bit as the price is going up multiple times okay it used to be that the you may have heard of something called dollar cost averaging well this is um uh share cost averaging on the way out dollar cost averaging is to buy so that as a price goes down you buy a fixed dollar amount every single time at a constant rate you can pick up bargains along the way as the price goes down you wind up buying more right well with fixed cost, I mean, with fixed share selling, what you can do is you can sell a fixed amount multiple times at various different price levels as the price is increasing, okay? That's one possible solution. And there's a guy, he was on the, he's on the internet, he's got a YouTube channel, uh, Houston Wade. He came up with a way to do this. Uh, so I don't have his video you know, link with me, but this is his YouTube channel. Uh, check it out. And... Um, he says that there's, that there's a multi-step process you can do, right? You find some price at which you'd be happy to sell all your shares with, okay? In his case, that price is $100,000 per share for GameStop, okay? And at that price, you sell one share. That's step two. Sell one share at that price, $100,000 per GameStop. Then you wait until the price increases by 50% and you sell another share, okay? Then, then you repeat, you go back to step three until you run out of shares. You wait until the price increases by 50%. You sell another share. You wait until the price increases by 50%. You sell another share. So how does this work out? Uh, mathematically, basically his sale price is equal to a hundred thousand times 1.5 raised to the N where N is, uh, you know, which, you know, which time you're selling. So that, that's the formula for sell price that he came up with, which is pretty decent, right? So what does that look like if you were to put that into a chart, into a, a spreadsheet? Okay, first price is going to be 100000 right? Next time you sell, it's going to be 150000 because you're up 50%, right? Next time, it's going to be 225000 That's your next sell price is 225000 And it keeps increasing. At some point, you know, if you, if you do this 10 times, your final sale price is going to be $3.8 million. Let me repeat, $3.8 million if you do this 10 times. This is how exponentials work in, if, if, if you've never, um, if, if you haven't studied mathematics a lot. This is the law of exponentials, basically. They, they go up very rapidly in price. They go up very rapidly in value. And uh, yeah, this is it. It's it's a decent price. It's a decent way to do this. So let's see. If you sold one share at a hundred thousand, you get a hundred thousand dollars. When you sell another share at one hundred fifty thousand, you've already sold the first share at a hundred thousand. That means that you've got two hundred fifty thousand dollars total at that point in time, right? By the, by by your second sale, you've got two hundred fifty thousand dollars. By your third sale, you're making your third sale at two hundred twenty-five thousand. Add that to the two hundred fifty thousand, and you have four hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. By your third sale, you're, you've made $475,000, okay? By your fourth sale, you're selling at $337,000. You add that to the previous, all the, all the previous sales, which is equal to $475,000. That means that your running count, the running amount of money that you made by your fourth sale is $812,000, okay? That's a significant amount of money. And if you did this all the way out for 10 if you did this 10 times, if the price kept going up, you would have $11 million that you made, okay, 
from 10 sales during the MOAS. That's, uh, that's what an exponential looks like. Okay. Um, is it a good idea? I don't know. It, it, you know, I'm not, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. It's information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. This is what, you know, Houston Wade thought. Uh, do I think that's pretty cool? Yeah, I think it's a pretty cool way to do it. Um, do I plan to do something like this? I'm certainly not against it. Uh, I probably will be doing this. <laughs> it sounds really nice. You know, you might want to just keep some shares in just for the MOAS because you don't want to sell at, um, you know, you don't, do you want to miss out on, I mean, how would you feel if you sold most of your shares and then the price went up to a hundred thousand and more? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. It's, it's, that ain't financial advice. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Hope you've been enter entertained. I will not be making a video during the MOAS, probably, because there'll be so much stuff going on. And if I, even if I did make the video, I don't know if it would get aired. Um, <clears throat> yeah. These are some thoughts I had about what the MOAS might happen. Okay. So with that, I bid you good night and... Um, and uh, live long and prosper. <laughs> Goodbye.